So let's start here. This is our original piano version. And this is our new tambored version. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Multiple Dimensions, Part 30, Concatenate, Part 2. In today's episode, we set out to do several things. Uh, we liked the idea of having the void story composition in both piano and timbres versions. So we spent a bunch of time getting that, and you just heard some of that. We'll play more of that for you later. In order for that to work, we had to drop the clarinet's dynamics across the board. The, the clarinet was overwhelming the other parts, and it took us a while to kind of figure out what was going on. And and the answer is, the the patch for the clarinet is, Duh! whereas for piano, it's bang, bang, and the clarinet is, Duh! so the decay of the clarinet is, is longer, and we were having other parts coming in up under the clarinet, the clarinet was just overriding him, so we had to soften it. And there was one place where the same thing happened with the oboe, but otherwise the oboe was playing only really fast short notes, so it didn't matter. But the clarinet was playing all these half note pieces, and it mattered quite a bit. Um, we also, so we updated that, and we updated a video to go with it. Then we also updated our 3D piano kits, um, and in particular, what we did was we made it easier to play the scale. So for example, this is the 3663 minor major scale. And now you just go, probably need to check up the volume there because we had this way down. It was hard to figure out what the minor and major were. Well, they, you just click the boxes across the top. And if you want to play minor, you click whatever's on the lower realm. And that, what, that sounds like no big deal, but over here, this was confusing the heck out of us because it was, you know, it was all connected. Same thing here, to play the minor scale, go across the top, come down. So when the note, when the two scales share the same note, like the root or the neutral, um, you just make that be a big box, and when they don't share it, then you make it a half box in the upper or lower line. Like down here, as we may remember, this, this scale, which is the 3663, shares the last two notes. So the big deal about that was the new, it's easier to play, and it's because it's size-coded as well as color-coded. The size tells you something and the color. So that was kind of cool. So we did all that. So what we're going to do for you now is we're going to play the new um, tambored version uh, in its entirety of uh, Void Story, and then that'll take us home, and then we'll come back. Here we go.
So that ends today's stream. What we <clears throat> find that we really like about this retambering, we love the uh, we love the oboe staccato, and we and uh, it's da, 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 da. and we also love the clarinet choir and the chords. When we were soloing the chords, we spent a lot of time listening line by line to the two versions, uh, the piano chords and the clarinet and tuning the dynamics so overall the dynamic felt the same but the the clarinet playing certain chords against each other just seems to more expressively draw out some of the consonants dissonance it was really cool and it just you know it sounds different and it's interesting and both versions work we feel we learned a lot about relative dynamics of different instruments especially the cut off or the delay time being shorter on the piano than on the you know, on the piano the way you make it delay longer is you have to hold down the sustain pedal sustain that's the word we're looking for the sustain is long on this clarinet patch whereas on the piano it's short and there's probably some way to well you have to put notes in another interesting thing this oboe was so loud that uh, it was originally mf when it was a piano and it was way too loud. It was overwhelming the chord. This way, it's just right. That's, you can hear it. You can just hear it at the top of the range. And this is an important chord because it's, it's the ending of the whole piece. And this is the original version. And you can hear, barely hear the piano. And if we want, we could jack the piano up, and we didn't. So uh, you can also see we play, we learned a lot more about how to change timbres and things. You have to go in the mixer, and and as an artifact of that, we accidentally lost these connecting lines, which we know how to fix going back. But well, we learned quite a bit about custom timbres. Uh, for example, here is where um, the marimba is coming in. And, and we, we kept saying, why are there two lines for only one of them is a marimba and the other says grand piano? And the answer is because we originally put this in here as a piano grand staff and, and we're, that's, that, well, that's half of the answer. The rest of it we don't know. But if you wanted to, this is where we could go in and change it to the music box. There's no way to change it to music box uh, from the friendly interactive menu over here, you know, where you say instead of marimba, uh, if I wanted the music box, you know, I could select an instrument, but you cannot find music box in here. The closest you can find is musical saw and musical glasses, but it's in there. The patch is in there, but you have to go in to the mixer and here, and then you pick it from the pop-up menu here where all, all of this stuff is. So we, we had sort of run into that before in a previous stream, and this turned out to be a great way for us to remind ourselves. The other uh, detail is, you may or may not remember that we had, um, when we, uh, where are we at? At the end, here we had normal, and then we transposed it up by three and by six half tones. And the statens has changed. The statens changed, the, the, the cadence has changed from a restful cadence to an urgy half cadence. So the energy in this whole area went up. And similarly, uh, similarly, over here, an ambivalence went into a driftance. So we actually took the time and trouble and figured out with our exhaustive line diagram where the red are. Uh, 164 and 177, which was here, and 177, that went up a teeny little bit. It went up, it went about up about a quarter of this cursor. You know, it went from here to there, and from here to there. You know, it just felt satisfying to, you know, make sure we. Com because down the road, you know, when we're doing stuff like this again and using a line diagram and we're using transposing i don't think we've ever realized before that when you transpose uh, a cadence its function can change 
I mean, it makes sense now that you think about it. So our ideas for next time, we are swimming in ideas for next time. We want to share the animation we made of the, uh, the clarinet oboe version. Uh, we want to keep working with the piano kits. One of our uh, aha realizations is um, you, could take, you could take this scale and um, the way you would show a jump of three would, would have everything like, like this, this figure here. Let's see. That's a one, three. Now, if we shifted it over to the right by one, there is no one in there. So we've taken it out of the scale. Let's jump it by three instead. So that's a one, two figure. So we're going to move everything over. Now it's going to go. Now, do you see what happened? We went from a blue, blue, gray to a gray, pink, green. Well, these were two modes and a neutral, which means this was a tonic chord. But here we went from gray to an urge note to a none note. So we, when you have a pink note with, without any blue, it's a dominant chord, which is called urge energy. When you have blue notes only, it's called rest energy. So what was originally a rest chord here has been, by shifting it to the right three spots, been turned into an urge chord. This chord, when we went up by three, move it to the right, stays dominant because these are none, none, and another urge. So that would not have changed the, the function, but this definitely would have changed. And that's kind of what happened to us. I know we're getting a little pedantic here, but when we went up by three and by six, sometimes it changed it, statens to a half cadence, and sometimes it left it alone, statens to statens. So that that's a whole new learning for us, and we realized we could show that visually uh, with the scale. So the idea of the 3D Piano Kit scale is to give us yet another angle, another perspective. We have we have musical scores, and we have you know piano keyboards, and we have uh, spreadsheets galore, um, and, and reference spreadsheets and all that stuff. But all of them are like there's some ineffable musical expression beyond words uh, that we're working on our ability to speak that language and to sneak up on it from different angles. You know, bang our heads as far as we can go, playing on the piano with our little fingers, which is as good as we're, we are at. We play clarinet, remember? Um, then learn some music theory, then make up your own music theory, then uh, go back and learn this scoring system here, and then, you know, kind of lately coming up with this little piano kit idea is cool. And then changing timbres and this is again the idea of multiple dimensions you could say another idea of multiple dimensions is you look at it from the x axis y axis z axis alpha, alpha axis beta axis gamma axis delta epsilon as many different axes as you can look at something from and keep getting different angles and perspectives on it you know like think about trying to look at yourself from behind your own head or think about trying to look at yourself from inside your brain going out uh, fantastic voyage for those who remember that movie. Anyway, thank you for your time, attention, curiosity, and interest. We've told you what our ideas are for next time. Look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Do take care, do come back, and do keep on streaming. <laughs>